Stations are the lifeline of Elite Dangerous. They are the safe heaven for every commander. It can be a rock, a high level Rubik's Cube or a giant stick with circles attached. These stations provide all the ingredients for the commanders of Elite Dangerous. When I first started Elite Dangerous there were the Coriolis Station, Oscillus Station, Orbis Station and the Outpost. But after the last updates of the Asteroid Base, Capital Shipyard and the installation were added as well. Now there is more to these stations that meets the eye. Obviously millions of people live inside them and the stations are basically giant hollow cities. These things must have some interesting facts to them. And they have. For starters, this, the stations generate artificial gravity by slowly rotating around. This causes the people to, to get about half of the gravity here on earth, which was on purpose, so that they could carry twice the weight. This will be easier for the logistics of the station and also on the landing for ships. This does mean though that the further you live from the center of the station, the lower the gravity will become. Gravity differs between each tower's floors. And for many residents, real daylight is a rare privilege because of the different floors that they have. Obviously if you live on the top floor, you would have paid a lot more than live on the bottom floor. Maybe that would also create a real difference between rich and poor, but I don't know about that. Every station has a different economic output. This is clearly visible from inside the station and sometimes also from outside of the stations. And with the orbit stations, you can clearly see, sometimes, you can clearly see the farms and towns living in a vast grassland artificially created in the rings of the orbit stations. Stations can differ between themselves with, ha with some having more rings or less or just some added stuff. Some having absolutely nothing, like the one that we see here, the one that is in, at Seos and Sotis. The histories of these stations goes very far. For example, the stations were mainly constructed because of all the different gravitational forces that many different colonizations had on planets. For example, if your parent, if, if your <laughs> parent, if your planet is extremely big, you would have more gravity to it than if, if a planet is smaller, which would mean that the people that live on it would drastically change over time. So what they did is they tried to only colonize planets that had about the same weight and mass as Earth has so that the colonization you know would go in the right order and that people would live on the right circumstances making them not that different and if people were to travel between planets obviously they would you know not die you know because that's the issue if you live if you live on Earth and you go to Mars, that's not really a big problem, but if you, if you live on Earth and you go to a planet that is 20 times bigger than Earth, you would be, you would collapse because your bones cannot hold the immense gravitational forces that uh, becomes applied to you. So that's the real problem with that. But making one general gravitational force on the stations made it really easy for all humans to live there. You could live on, a, on the planets and you can also live on the stations. All the stations have about the same gravitational force because they rotate at about the same speed. Due to centrifugal forces, the people on the station and everything else is pushed against the floor, successfully faking gravity. But the Coriolis station, due to their the fact that they are not round, there should be places where the gravity factor isn't perpendicular to the ground. There are multiple areas of the station where the floor is all time tilted and even if the docking bays seem uh, like they are concave, this problem makes it literally unlivable. But then again, you know, it's the, the Coriolis stations, uh, you know, the hexagon stations are, are a very uh, a very big icon of the Elite Dangerous fr uh, franchise and uh, it, so it shouldn't really matter that much, I mean it's, you know, it's something that belongs in Elite Dangerous and even if it doesn't really make sense, who cares about that. And more on this I couldn't really find about stations, obviously every station has its own story and we know that big companies create these stations and expand them on the way, we also know that they can move and they can depart if they want to to different areas of the galaxy and uh, they, they do still, and I don't know if that's still the fact uh, but I think they they also still actually move in the old FSD drive with the whole witch base thing. But with that being said, 
these I mean these stations are beautifully crafted and made from a gamer's perspective but also from inside the game itself these stations perfectly fit in and really it will make Elite Dangerous a lot harder if they weren't around so again there isn't much more lore to the stations I mean they are what they are and with that said thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, and by the way uh, if you guys have any ideas for a good or a nice subject on the lore video please let me know and then I can try to uh, to make something of that if I find that interesting too. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Cheers!